Welcome to Across Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Now, last week, a quartet of African leaders led by South Africa's president, Cyril Ramaphosa, headed out to Russia and Ukraine on a peace mission aimed at helping resolve the war between the countries that began last February with Russia's invasion of its neighbour. Now, the conflicts had a big impact on Africa. Economically, logistically, politically, it's exacerbated pre-existing food crises by disrupting the continent's supplies of grain and fertilizer and put Africa at the center of a tug of war for its support for or against Russia. The African peace mission puzzled many within the continent and has yet to yield any results. Ukraine's president, Vladimir Zelensky, since said that there can be no negotiation with Russia whilst it occupies parts of Ukraine. And Moscow said that peace is difficult to realize. Despite the mission's shortcomings, South Africa's international relations minister, Naledi Pandor, told me that the African leaders who headed out to Ukraine and Russia were aware of the mission's limitations, but were still keen to try. Uh, the mission uh, was very modest uh, in its ambitions because we understand this is a very complex uh, situation. Uh, our uh, approach is to seek peace and to attempt to draw the two parties together to sit around a table. Really, that's the modest ambition. The high ambition is to bring the war to an end. Um, what we achieved was that our leaders were able to engage with both countries in a very, very substantive uh, set of meetings. So we had an openness to listen to the African leaders and to have very robust at times and open discussions on the views of both countries. I think for me the success is that there's agreement for continued uh, meeting and uh, deliberation. So nobody said, oh, go back to Africa, you know, we're not interested. They actually said it's an op important opening. Uh, we're glad Africa is taking this up. Uh, we would want to continue the discussion. Of course, they each have, as the two countries, particular positions as to the outcome they desire, should there be a negotiation. But this has to be a process. And I think the African uh, peace mission has set a process in motion, and we'll see what the follow-up uh, helps us achieve. And South Africa is coming for a lot of international flack for its position on the war itself, its non-aligned position. Uh, how far is it willing to go in terms of stepping back from condemning the war itself or even condemning uh, Vladimir Putin? It, it, particularly in mind, bearing in mind it might have economic consequences for the country in terms of its relationship with the US. Well, um, I, I respect the US as a very significant democracy uh, uh, in our world. Uh, but I think it's important when you're a democracy that you accept what its principles are, which are that we may have uh, varied opinions on a range of issues, but we must respect each other for those opinions. Um, so certainly South Africa has an unaligned position, and we've always held the view through our leaders of the struggle, our first founding president of South Africa, that we must always seek peace that as a country, having had the experience we had of what oppression can do to a people, wherever we can, we must try and draw parties together. This is the foreign policy platform of South Africa. So we don't take sides. We attempt to assist to resolve issues. And this is the position uh, that we've adopted. Hence our participation. Uh, in the peace mission. So uh, rather than you know, condemning one and uh, you know, uh, applauding the other, that doesn't advance anything. It's mere condemnation or uh, you know, applauding. Our desire is to achieve an end to what we regard as a terrible conflict, which is having great harm on people, on infrastructure, and on the relations of the globe uh, in its entirety. But doesn't that position, isn't it made more difficult to maintain considering the, the clear aggression from one side versus the other? So rather than two 
people or two sides in a conflict where, uh, you know, what happened is a little bit up for grabs or, uh, or unclear. You, you have a, uh, we have a, a, a war that was started by one party entering the, the territory of another, which South Africa itself acknowledged at the beginning of the war, you know, isn't on. So how does that feed into the definition of non-alignment within an international context for South Africa? Well, you would be aware uh, that uh, we had uh, much alignment uh, many years ago, up to around 1990, when we had the Cold War. And uh, this choosing of sides brought an amazing amount of harm to Africa. Leaders who didn't support one side were assassinated. Leaders who supported another side became part of very negative re uh, rebel groups. We had one side supporting the apartheid state, another part of another side supporting part of the freedom movement. We don't want to go back there. And this is why we said we wish to remain non-aligned, because you're pulled. See, because once you say, I take this side or that side, then I must follow you, whatever you do. And this, from our experience, leads to great harm and hasn't always been in our interest. And this is our concern, that when you're pulled hither and thither, depending on whoever is leading the pull, you are then forced into that, and we don't wish to be in that. So this is uh, 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 our perspective, is to draw the two together. We also feel it's important that we must remain in a position that allows us to speak to both parties. And as you saw with the Africa Peace Mission, we were uh, received both by Ukraine as well as by Russia, and we were able to speak to both leaders uh, equally. And I think it's because of the position we've maintained that we're able to do that. There are few leaders that are able to approach both countries equally at the moment. And the African mission was able to do that. And you think that was the result of your very studies? And I think absolutely, yes, yes. And we've been very clear where we need to be critical, we are. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been very clear that uh, there must be respect for sovereignty and that the territorial integrity of all member states of the UN must be respected. This is very important for us as Africa because we know what conflict is. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important uh, that we don't seek <laughs> to compel uh, uh, African states to take up a particular position. Because in the end, uh, when matters come to a head, Africa is forgotten. And we don't wish to put ourselves in a position of disadvantage or conflict with anyone. When it comes to some of that tension caused with the United States, why is South Africa choosing not to, to, to publish the, the terms of reference of to all the eventual findings of the investigation of that Russian boat that was docked in South Africa that allegedly was carrying weapons? Isn't the transparency of this investigation essential to the country's reputation and diplomatic relations? Well, I, I, as far as I understand it, the findings must be made public. Uh, otherwise, why have the investigation? Uh, so I don't know where this uh, notion uh, that the findings won't be made public comes from. Uh, I believe once the uh, uh, investigation is done, uh, the president, as uh, head of state, must indicate what the findings are because the world has an interest uh, in this. and. Uh, We've got to be able to refute uh, this notion that we gave uh, sold arms or provided arms to Russia, which I actually don't believe is true. And of course, there's an independent body, and we hope all those with evidence will come forward and present it to the judges' panel. And do you think it's problematic that terms of reference have not been released so people know what they're looking for? Well, essentially, we want to know, did South Africa sell arms? Uh, provide arms to Russia, and if they did, who did it, and under what uh, statutory authority? Because we have a proper mechanism in South Africa. We're one of the most strict countries in terms of arms trade, because we know the harm of illicit arms trade. So we're very regulated. In fact, uh, private sector companies that sell uh, arms complain that we are too rigid. Uh, and so if anything uh, out of the law occurred, 
this panel will reveal it and we'll have to deal with the persons who are criminals. South Africa's International Relations Minister Naledi Pandor there speaking to me after that African peace mission to Ukraine and Moscow. Well, that's it for Across Africa this week. Thanks very much for joining us and do so again. Till then, take care.